Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to attempt to explain to you in less than 10 minutes everything that you need to know to get started with graphs and adjacency matrices, starting with graphs. We can visualize the graph data structure as a collection of nodes sometimes called vertexes or vertices connected by lines that we call edges. Each graph can either be a directed graph, which means that the edges point in a specific direction, or an undirected graph, which means that the edges are bidirectional. There are also mixed graphs that contain both directed edges and bidirectional edges, but for the sake of brevity we will be sticking with the two basic types for this video. It is also worth mentioning that a node may be connected to an edge that points said node to itself. An edge that points a node to itself is called a loop. In this video we will be going over one widely used representation of graphs called an adjacency matrix and how it is represented in code. The adjacency matrix representation uses a matrix to represent a graph in code. We can think of a matrix as a set of numbers laid out in rows and columns. We'll get to how the representation looks in code soon, but first it is important to understand how this can be visualized as a graph. Let's start by drawing out our example graph. For this example, and for all examples throughout this video, we will use bidirectional edges to make undirected graphs. Each node will reference using a number. Our first node, node 1, will be adjacent or have an edge connection with nodes 2 and 4. Node 2 will be adjacent to nodes 1, 4, and 3, and so on and so forth. Now how do we represent this on our matrix? To begin, we will need to label the columns and rows of our matrix with the number of nodes. The size of the adjacent matrix in this case will always be n by n, with n being the number of nodes. After we've labeled our columns and rows, we can then begin to fill in our matrix. Each slot in our matrix we will need to either fill with a 0 or a 1. If we put a 1 in a slot, it means that the corresponding column and corresponding row are adjacent. Or in other words, the row node has an edge leading to the column node. If we put a 0 in the slot, it means that the two nodes do not have a connecting edge. Now let's go step by step starting with row 1, column 1. Does 1 have an edge leading to itself? No, it does not. As mentioned before, if a node has an edge leading to itself, then that edge is called a loop and looks something like this. But in this case, the node does not have an edge leading to itself, so we will fill this slot with a zero. Next, we will check if node 1 has an edge that connects to node 2. It does. So for this slot, we will fill in a 1, meaning that an edge does exist connecting node 1 and node 2. It is also important to mention that since this is an undirected graph and the edges are bidirectional, the existence of an edge between the two nodes in reverse is also true. So if an edge exists connecting node 1 and node 2, an edge also exists connecting node 2 and node 1. So that means that we can also put a 1 in the slot at row 2, column 1. Next, we check to see if there is an edge connecting node 1 and node 3. There is not. So we will put a 0 in this slot. And node 1 and node 4? Yes. As you can see, there is an edge here connecting node 1 and node 4. Lastly, node 1 and node 5. No, there is no edge connecting node 1 and node 5. And this is what we'll do until we've filled in all of the slots for our matrix with either a 0 or a 1. Now how would we represent and work with something like this in code? In a language like JavaScript, a 5x5 adjacency matrix containing no edges would look like this. This should look familiar, as it is the exact structure that we worked with in the previous slide. We can build this matrix by writing a function that takes in the number of nodes and constructs the matrix based on that number, which would look something like this. Let's go through this code line by line. 
So the node count argument will determine the size of the matrix. So if we wanted to build a 5x5 matrix containing no edges, we would pass 5 as the node count argument to our build adjacent matrix function. This is because, as mentioned in the previous slide, to represent a graph in the form of an adjacency matrix, we will need to add a column for each node and a row for each node, resulting in an n by n matrix. Next, we declare an empty array. Here, for each row up until the node count, we create an empty column, and then we iterate through the node count again, this time adding an index containing the value 0 to the empty column for each iteration. We then add the newly created array of columns to its corresponding row. Once this is done for each row, we return the adjacency matrix. Next, we will look at how to insert edges into the structure that we've created. For this demonstration, we will not do any validation in our insert function so that we can stay focused on the actual topic, but you should know that in practice you will want to validate the arguments passed to your insert function. For example, if the arguments to your insert function contain row or column coordinates for nodes that do not exist in the matrix, you will want to return an error. Our insert function will look something like this. It will take an adjacency matrix as well as insert coordinates in the form of a row and a column as arguments. For this example, we will pass 2 as our row and 3 as our column. We will need to subtract a 1 from both the row and the column because the indexes of our arrays are zero based. For example, if we want to access the first row of our matrix, the index is actually equal to zero, and not 1, hence our reason for subtracting a 1 from our row and column arguments. Finally, we insert a 1 at the coordinates provided by the row and column. So if the row is 2 and the column is 3, a 1 will be inserted here. And let's not forget that for undirected edges, if there is an edge going from node 1 to node 2, there is also an edge going in the opposite direction from node 2 to node 1, which is represented in this next line. And finally, our resulting matrix will look like this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is graphs and adjacency matrices. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you didn't find this video helpful, yeah, go on and hit that dislike button. Uh, yeah, I'm out.